Okay guys, today I'm putting in some new clutch plates and steels, or frictions and steels, and a new boss. That's what this uh, Wiseco is. So I've already taken the clutch cover off and the pressure plate. So this is the pressure plate. I'll just explain since I can't jump the gun. So this pressure plate does what, do, what the name would sound like it does. It puts pressure on the clutch plates. So it keeps everything engaged, but you just unscrew all these and it just literally slides off. You've got this, it goes on the end of your push rod. It goes inside like this, in there like that. All right, so I'm just gonna talk a little bit about this. I went with the billeted Wise Co. Boss. The reason why I did was it was cheaper than the Henson and they're both made out of aircraft grade aluminum. I can't remember what the Henson is or this one, but they could be the same aircraft grade aluminum. They're both, anyways, really good quality aluminum. Uh, something that I've noticed is different on this than the stock one is it's got the coatings, obviously. It's got, I don't know what you would call it, what type of coating, like a Teflon coating to help um, with your smoothness is shifting and I don't know if you can see it's got these little holes in the side of it you see these little holes there right there all along there and my guess those are for better oil flow to get in through your clutch so but anyways this has got a lifetime warranty on it it's another reason why I got it it was cheaper than Henson pretty much the same thing so okay so once you're to this point oh shoot you gotta make sure the bike's in gear, which is gonna be kind of hard to do. Okay, I think that's some gear. So there's a special tool that you would use. You pull these uh, clutch pack out and it goes around here and it holds your boss in place so you can undo this nut. This nut. Holy cow, is a 19 or a 29 millimeter nut. I had to go to O'Reilly's to get this because I didn't have one. It's 29 inch, I mean 29 millimeter. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, millimeter socket. But. Okay, back to it. So, make sure that fits. Yeah. Okay. So, when it's in gear and you push against your clutch pack, it should hold it in place enough for you to undo. Before you do that, there's a little tab here. I don't know if you can see it. So, I can zoom in. Yeah, I've already knocked that down. So, this tab you'll have to push it down with a screwdriver and that's why that hammers, I don't know if you can see it in the corner here. But anyways, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit it, oops, with this impact in the new 29 millimeter socket and it should zip right on out. So you're gonna push, hold it there with your fingers, put it on there and off she goes. See? And then you put that off to the side. Then we'll pull the lock washer off like this. This you should replace, which I did buy one to replace. And then we'll go ahead and pull these out. And I'll get a bag to throw those in real quick. side and these just slide out like so oh yeah there's a one so it's friction steel friction that's how it'll go back in or we'll just take the whole boss out okay so that's the whole boss assembly Bit. 
There we go. So it comes out. Don't lose this washer. This washer is very important. So we'll just put it back on there. There we go. You'll want to inspect your clutch basket here for notching, which this isn't too bad, but it's starting to. Um, I would like to replace this. Unfortunately, I don't uh, have the finances for a new one yet. So I wanna go riding this weekend. So I'm just replacing what I have. And this should be enough for the ride. And then the next time I go riding, this should be replaced. So I will do a video on how to replace the actual basket itself. But anyways, this will spin independently of this. This is uh, connected to your piston that goes up and down and then the inner ones connected to your transmission gears but anyways so take note of how all this stuff comes out like so oh sorry i'm not in camera there we go so put this down here so this is why I wanted to replace it. This is why I figure, I was having issues with my clutch sticking and stuff, but you see all the notch in here? This is what's really bad right here. I mean, that is, you hear that? So I think just replacing this is gonna improve my clutch handling quite a bit. So this is garbage. Um, just throw this off to the side. as easy as sliding the new one on. Double check that washer's on there. Interesting. And put this bad boy on. Oh yeah. Now, uh, I'm gonna go get the the frictions, the friction plates I've had soaking overnight and transmission oil, which is what you're supposed to do. Cause this has kind of got, I don't know, I'll show you on these ones. It's kind of got a, well it's wet so you can't tell. These pads are kind of like a corky material. It's not cork, but um, it looks like they'd be absorbent. So I think that's why you let them soak overnight. So I let mine soak 24 hours. I'm gonna go grab them. These are the, the steels. You don't need to soak those. Probably would be good if I didn't. So those are the steels. Okay. Move this stuff out of the way. Also inspect this for damage. I'm not seeing anything. Okay, so there's that. So, the order of operations. You can keep track when you pull it out how it's supposed to go, which I noticed, but it always is friction first, then steel. Then you coordinate back and forth. So, here's a friction. Lines up. These hook in with the outer basket. Oh man, this is gonna take some time. We'll get the exact one. got a steel. So there's been debate. I know I don't know which way. Maybe I can go check. So there's kind of a rounded side and a flatter side. I'm not sure if it goes down the round side. So let me see. I've heard it doesn't matter, but I'm just gonna go with how this one looks. Okay, so to me, it feels like they have the flat side down, so we're gonna stick with that. So, I'm gonna find out where the heck I just put that steel. 
That's the old one. Oh, here it is. Okay. So they did flat side down. Yeah, so we'll go flat side down as well. And then these little teeth hook up with your boss, which is your transmission. And that pressure plate, when you let go, puts pressure, which grabs everything together. So as your motor spins, it connects with, grabs this plate right here, which spins your transmission. And that's why you got the friction steel, friction steel between the two. So these will spin independent of each other. See, this is my piston going up and down in the bike. And this is my transmission. Hopefully that made sense. There she be. Here's the new nut or washer nut and you'll have to bend one of these tabs up. So I'm going to try to bend it before a little bit. I'm just going to do one of them since I know I'm going to get back in here and I'll do the other one next time. So I'll drop this in here and then I'll let you zoom in so you can see. Actually, maybe I should zoom in right now. So. I don't know if you can see, but there's a little tab right here. It's black, so it's hard to tell the background. And there's one there. And that's what these little hooks hook down into. And then you'll bend this up. But I'm going to go over here and kind of pre-start that real quick. Okay, there we go, put that bad boy on there. This is what I've kind of bent a little bit. And then you gotta put this nut on. This nut has gotta be torqued to 52 foot pounds. So I'm gonna go grab my torque wrench. Uh, before I do that though, I'm gonna hit it with the impact too. We should buy that clutch tool, dude. I was having the hardest time getting this thing to crank to a uh, spec. Oh, yeah. So what I ended up doing is got the impact, put it on the highest one, and it's like, Brrr! and then I, my thought process is, this will hold it in. Oh. Because I'm going to be in here in a, like a month or two anyways, replacing this. Oh. Okay. Yeah, that's not too shabby. It's just the coating I chipped off. All right, so that's what I ended up having to do. Yeah, buddy. You just chisel and a hammer. Sweet. Now it's just, oh, and then I've got uh, new clutch springs too. Oh, nice. Yeah. Jared's here, by the way. I'm going to start recording again. And then uh, I got new clutch springs. These are eight millimeter heads. No, wait, sorry, 10. 10 millimeter sockets, what you use for these, and you crank them down to 7.2 foot pounds. Okay, it takes a 10, and it's gotta be torqued to 7.2 foot-pounds. So I've got this little Harbor Freight torque wrench. It does inch-pounds, so to convert to foot-pounds, you just times, you know, um, seven foot-pounds by 12 inches to convert it to um, inches, pound inches, I guess is what it's called. So seven times 12 is 70, no, 80. 84, sorry about that car, or motorcycle, 84 inch pounds. So I'll just get that set and then show you where I'm at. 
So seven, we need to go a little past, so I'm actually gonna do, I'll do 85 foot-pounds. So, 80. All right, let's see here. So there's 80. 80's right there, and then I go five past. 85, 85 inch pounds. Then you're just gonna lock it down here at the bottom. And then we tighten her up till she clicks. Okay. So, put that on there. I'm wondering if these aren't stock because they are not touching. All right, so here we go. Let's see if we can get this bad boy to work. Yeah, there she goes. And you want to do this in a crisscross pattern to put it down equally. That's why I'm starting going here. I'll come over here. Get them all started. Am I, is my shoulder in the way? Yeah. Okay. So, so I'm starting here, going here, and you're going to go in a crisscross pattern. So I'll see if I can get out of the way. And then we'll, that way we put equal pressure down on this. Getting it started. There we go. Go here. Yeah, if I go already that way, I'm not it. Okay, so I think I'll time lapse the rest. So basically you're going to crisscross pattern and then we'll torque it down to seven. Oh, I'll just go through it. I won't be lazy. If you guys want to watch it, let me know if you like this kind of stuff. Seeing how it all goes together. It's nowhere near that seven foot pounds. Ugh. Okay, let's try this. Yeah, nowhere near. There we go. It's getting a little tighter. Yeah, that uh, that's good. Is it? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get the recipe from that. Yeah, dude, we're, I'm still full from it. Really? Yeah. We All ate right. like five too. You ate what? We ate like five too. Each. <laughs> what? Each. We ate at five. Oh, at I'm five. still full. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. All right. We'll see you later. All right. See you, dude. 
No, don't worry about it. I got stuff in the way. It's not close. I think we're about there. There it goes. There's one. It's two. Three. Click. Sorry, this isn't very audible. That one's good. No movement. No movement. No movement. No movement. No movement. There we go. Sweet. There we go. Today, finally, half a century later. Now, one of these has a long one that goes through. I think it's this one. Okay, so just put this on like so. I think the long one goes in here. Nope, here. Yep, there. Short. The rest are all the same size. I'm just going to double check that gasket one more time because I'm a little OCD and it moved a little bit. Yep, we're good. Okay. These get tightened down to seven foot pounds as well. To help me with this, I'm gonna use the end back just a little bit here.
go. I think I'll do that. So that was 80 inch pounds. We need to go 85. There we go. Oh. There. Good enough. And that's how you do a rough or a clutch swap there.